And thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Now. It has been my dream to be on Bowser TV. Come on, man. <laughs>
Uh, I can say it has been complicated, but finally I'm in fourth year and uh, I can say it's worth it. Mm. Yeah, it's complicated, but it's worth it. <laughs> so there's a sense of relief in the fourth year? Uh, yeah, I think there's a sense of relief after every year, <laughs> after every exam. So. <laughs> Yeah, the first three years, uh, they have been, uh, the system is like, uh, the first three years are called preclinical years here, and uh, the fourth and fifth year are cl clinical years. So if you have come to the fourth year, it's, it's like uh, you have, uh, you've managed to pass the preclinical years. So it's yeah, more relief than the, the first three years. So I can't say a simple, uh, sentence to <laughs> to conclude i don't know how to uh, put it but it has been a very long journey uh, full of ups and downs as it is in every part of our life mm. but uh, with of course more range of ups and downs when you are uh, when you have something when you win something you will be very happy more than usual probably in med school and when you are low you're low like uh, it hits you so mm. it has been ups and downs a journey full of ups and downs but at the end, it will be worth it, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Mashallah, that's good. As you said, you're studying in Turkish. Mm -hmm. What's it like studying in Turkish? Uh, when you study uh, medicine in Turkish, you're going to have the challenge of studying medicine and the challenge of studying it in Turkish. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to look at it like this. Uh, the factors you can uh, reduce or you can eliminate and the factors you can't eliminate. The challenge of studying medicine is something that you can't eliminate. So uh, you have to deal with it one way or another. But the factor of studying it in Turkish, you can eliminate it by simply just uh, trying to make your Turkish as good as uh, your classmates. Maybe you cannot uh, make it 100% like your classmates, but you have to be able or you can make it uh, high or good to a level that it's not going to be a factor anymore in understanding the teacher or tr uh, trying to ask the teacher a question or reading notes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had good advice from my seniors before I start. Uh, I was very curious and also I had at the time I was uh, kind of scared to start uh, this journey in Turkish while I was studying Tomer, like my first year here before starting uh, medicine. And uh, the simple answer from my seniors on what I have to do before starting the medicine uh, faculty in Turkish was to study Turkish now, like to make my Turkish as good as possible. Mm -hmm. So I tried working on my Turkish and Alhamdulillah in the first year, it was not big mm -hmm. of a, it was not that much of a factor for me. The Turkish was not a factor. So I was only there to face the challenge of adapting to the medical school. Mm. So you're saying if um, students that are going to study in Turkish can focus on Turkish for their first year, like study it properly. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you mean by properly? How good should it be? How do we measure it? <laughs> uh, there is no specific measurement, but mm. I can say that you should not stop where you're, uh, you should not stop at the time you reach your minimal requirements. Our minimal requirement is C1 certificate, right? Yeah. But uh, you should not stop there. Like, that's not the best we can do. Uh, I have seen lots of international students uh, that are very talented. When you come here, most of the time you, uh, you come with a scholarship, like in our case at least. So uh, at, like, at that point you understand that you are not the same person uh, the, with other people. Like you, you are not limited by minimal requirements. So uh, after achieving your minimal requirements, try doing something more. Like, be as good as you can be. Go extra. Like, I'm not uh, giving you some uh, motivation to go and do something extra on, on that. But for example, uh, when you are in uh, A2 level before passing to B1, there is no much thing you can do except to, uh, taking the, 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 the things that the teachers give you. Mm -hmm. But after that, after B1, you at least have a very good background to go and search for books and uh, to attend some conferences or something that is held in Turkish mm. or to, ad to ad at least understand Turkish. Mm. At that time you have to, if you can try to go and do something extra, mm -hmm. I think you can, you can have good results.
uh, challenge yourself to make your Turkish better. And after getting your C1 certificate, also don't stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, as you said, for the scholarship students, they must learn Turkish compulsory for a year. For the private students, they also do has a like preparatory class, right? Mm-hmm. Those that have to study in Turkish, right? Yeah. So the rule goes for both of them. The rule goes for both of them, but mm-hmm. if uh, you are, whether you are a scholarship student or you are a private student, mm-hmm. you have to bring the C1 certificate in most faculties mm-hmm. to register, yeah. or at least B2. Some faculties require B2, some faculties require C1. Mm-hmm. So if you are new to the language, you have to go to the the centers to learn it, Turkish language centers to learn it. Mm. At that time, you, you can uh, do your best to make your Turkish as good as possible. Even after we start studying uh, medicine, mm. like, uh, I don't know about uh, others, but for me, improving my Turkish was still an aim. Mm. So, like, I'm trying to imagine what your first year was like. You started, you were teaching you in Turkish. Was it, like, strange or... You know, especially these terms mm-hmm. in medicine, it's the same in engineering. You speak the language, but when you get to class and they start mentioning, you know, some terms in engineering, you feel lost. Mm-hmm. So did you memorize those terms beforehand or how did you deal with that? Uh, as part of my preparation, mm-hmm. something uh, out of the curriculum of studying Turkish that I did was trying to read a biology book, biology high school book, to see how the terms are or how much the terms are different from uh, the English I used to study in, uh, in Ethiopia. So I tried to study while recording my progress as number of pages I read per hour. So yeah, you remember Mursal, he was here and uh, he was also motivating me when I studied. I was guys, <laughs> the Turkish language course. Yeah, there was something else. No, mashallah. Yeah, Mursal was also very good and <laughs> very hard working, so he was a motivation too. Uh, so uh, I tried to read the biology book. I one I, I don't remember which grade it was, but it was one high school grade, and uh, I saw some. I saw at least how the terms are changing from English to Turkish. Mm. Yeah, uh, they they use uh, specific patterns or they use the term in English as it is. Actually, that is uh, an advantage for someone who knows English. Mm. Yeah, if you know, for example, the term professional in English, mm. if you know it, what it means, and it's in Turkish professional, mm. yeah, like you at least have an idea what it is. Mm. I see, mashallah. Oh, that's a good tip, mashallah, and you work hard too. <laughs> Can you please tell us what are your classmates like? Uh, how many international students are in your class? How many Turks are in your class? Do you mm. get along with them? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> uh, how has it been? In, I, ha- I want to divide it as preclinical and clinical years. In the first three years, uh, okay, numbers may be different in different faculties, but for my faculty, we, we were like uh, 300 something students in one year, like the first year of medicine. Yeah, more, it was more than 300 uh, students. Um, in the first three years, I think the numbers are more or less the same. Mm. Yeah, and uh, we attend in the same uh, class, like there is something called Amphi, Amphitheater. Mm. So uh, we attend there. The theory, most of the time, students don't come, so the, the Amphi is not that uh, crowded, as really? you would imagine with 300 people. <laughs> Like how many come to class? Uh, okay, let's say the first days of uh, the amphi, it will be crowded. Mm-hmm. Like everybody wants to see what it looks like at least. <laughs> and after that, uh, we choose to study at home because we have the notes from last years and it will be the same classes, uh, the same uh, teachers with the same subjects. Mm-hmm. So uh, the same explanations and we have the explanations on paper. So we prefer to read it uh, while in the dormitory or in the library. So we don't go to class unless for specific reasons. This uh, is something normal. <coughs> it is normal everywhere. Uh, in medicine, it's normal. Medicine. Because, yeah, uh, I, I, I actually read something uh, from a medical student mm-hmm. uh, saying that uh, you guys 
referring to other people outside of medicine, miss classes to enjoy life. We miss classes to <laughs> read, so we are not we are not the same, yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, this is uh, what like if the attendance is not compulsory, we mm -hmm. prefer to read at home. Yeah, like if it is more productive, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at times it, uh, from 300 people, maybe 5 or 10 people come to class. There are occasions, yeah, this is our secret and I can't believe I'm <laughs> telling you here. <laughs>